Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to utilizing advanced ADC capabilities on Arduinos with the SAM D21. And that's the microcontroller from Atmel and they use it on the Arduino Zero, the Maker 1000. I think SparkFun has some boards that use the SAM D21. But the whole idea here is we're familiar with the analog read function that, that is in the Arduino IDE and it's real easy to use. But on the SAM D21, there's a lot more advanced features in the ADC and that's what we're gonna talk about in this series. The Arduino IDE and the libraries that go with it are great. Why? Because they abstract a lot of the low level functions and the complexity of programming a microcontroller. So they make it real easy to get a project up and running real quick without you know, a lot of understanding about a microcontroller and its data sheet. But if we want to get to some of the more advanced features of the microcontroller, we have to go under the hood a bit and look at how to change the registers in that microcontroller so we can get to the advanced features. And for modern microcontrollers like the SAMD21, there's a lot of advanced features that aren't exposed in the uh, Arduino IDE. So in this series, we're gonna focus on the ADC and in part one, which we're, you're watching right now, uh, we're gonna look at window monitoring mode in the SAMD21. So what is window monitoring mode? Well, it allows you to define a range or a window in your ADC range or your ADC values where if a value goes outside of that window or inside of that window, depending on how you define the window, the Arduino will trigger an event or the ADC on the Arduino will trigger an event such as an interrupt. And then on that interrupt, you can then do something. So for instance, let's say we have a 10-bit ADC range. So we have values from 0 to 1023 or 1023. Let's say we define a window in there of 512 to 900. And we say any value that goes outside that window, we will trigger an interrupt and then we can do something. So think of if you're trying to set up a home automation system and you have a light sensor. And if the light at a window gets too high, you might want to shut a blind or if it gets too low, you might want to turn on a light. Well, you can use window mode to detect that asynchronous event and then trigger either a light to turn on or a blind to close. Now, you might be saying, well, I can just do that in the main loop of the Arduino sketch. I can just you know, do a main loop, take a reading, and look to see if it's outside of a certain value. And of course you can. But what's nice about window mode is, let's say you have a complex program where you can't be sitting there polling all these different things because you have a lot of things going on in the program. This runs in the ADC. The window mode runs in the ADC. The CPU can then do other things. And then when the event occurs, the ADC signals an interrupt. And then in the interrupt, you can take your action. So that's what's real nice about uh, window mode for asynchronous ADC events. Okay, here's a cutout straight from the SAM D21 data sheet, and it's showing how to set up window mode. And so it's showing the different types of window mode. So you can either do disabled, which is the default state. You can do mode one. And so in window mode, you have two different registers for defining the range. You have the window lower tolerance and the window upper tolerance. So in mode one, if the ADC result is above the lower tolerance you set, then all of a sudden it triggers that event, that interrupt. In mode two, if it's below the upper tolerance, it triggers that interrupt. And then in three and four, if the result is inside the window or if the result is outside the window, it triggers the event. And if you notice, they're saying, you know, bits two to zero, and then it shows, you know, these, these values in hex, one, two, three, four. So what is this, this cutout from the data sheet is just showing you what to set the window mode register to for these different modes. So we'll show that in the sketch, but I'm just trying to show a little bit under the hood. Okay, next let's look at the video. Let's look at a video of this in action, uh, and then we'll look at the, the code of how to set it up. Okay, here I have an Arduino Maker 1000 that this board here has Wi-Fi, but it also has a SAM D21 chip. You can also use this with the Arduino Zero, which has the SAM D21 chip. Uh, I will mention that on Forstronics.com, I actually sell these Maker 1000 boards. So if you want one for yourself, go to Forstronics.com. So here's my setup. I have the board. I have a wire here at A3. That's my analog pin that I'm using. And then I have a resistor 
and a light sensor, a resistive light sensor. So I just have a divider network from VCC to the divider point to ground, and so I'm measuring the voltage drop across the light resistor. And so what I'm gonna do is, when it goes low, or when it stops detecting light, I'm gonna turn on this LED to sort of simulate a condition where, oh no, you know, the light's gone, turn on another light. But we're just gonna see this LED here come on. So here's my setup. Next, I'm gonna to go to the serial monitor because I'm actually just logging the ADC readings right now. So as the window monitoring is running, I'm also grabbing ADC values and, and printing them on the serial monitor. So you can see we're at about, about 600 for, for our ADC reading with light. So now I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna put a box over the light sensor and we're gonna see this LED over here come on. So there we go, you can see it comes on right away once it gets a little darkness. So what's happening there? Well, I'm not monitoring the ADC in the main loop. What's happening is the ADC peripheral has window mode set up, it detects the condition that's out of the window that I've defined, and then it calls an interrupt, and this interrupt turns on this LED. And I'll, I'll show that in the code, of course. And then if we go back to the, uh, the serial monitor, we'll be able to see now that the, the uh, readings really ramped up. So here's what we were getting and now we're getting close to the the top range. So we we went outside the window and I believe for this example I set the window at 750. Speaking of that, let's look at the code that I used for this example. Okay, here we are with the code. What I first did was create a couple variables for setting the mode. So if you remember from the data sheet clip, you know, one was mode 1, two was mode 2, so on and so forth. Here's my setup code. I call this function. This is going to start my window mode in the ADC, and I'll show you this function in detail. But here I define the mode, and then I define the upper and lower boundaries. Now, when I'm using mode one, which I do use in this example, we don't care what the upper is because the, the window mode doesn't use the upper in mode one. It just uses the lower. But if you're using two, you're using the upper and not the lower. If you're using three and four, you're using both. I then start my serial monitor, I then loop. And you can see I have my own read ADC function, which I'll show you later, but this is what was printing to the serial monitor. Now I will mention for this code, you can't inside this ADC window begin, I have an end function as well, but inside this, while you're running this, you can't use the built-in Arduino ADC functions because they will change the settings that we have set up for window mode, and I'll show you what those are but that's just something to note. Here's the loop, here's the interrupt. So I'm assuming people are watching are familiar with interrupts. I do have a video on interrupts if you wanna check that out, but an interrupt is an asynchronous event that when it occurs, no matter where the CPU is in the code, it'll jump to this interrupt service routine or ISR. And so when the window triggers the interrupt, I use a digital write to turn on the LED, I then reset the interrupt flag and you could see window mo so it's basically window mode and it's the adc flag and so here you're getting a glimpse into to accessing the registers and so what i'm doing here is we could call out the registers and we could use hex or binary values to set them but atmel has what they call the atmel software framework and i'm using data structures from the asf as they call it so the arduino ide actually loads these asf data structures into the you know their library so you can access them i have a video on this if you want to go you know you can search on atmel software framework to look at these different data structures but you know the way i set this up and i explained this in that other video is i use the data sheet i use the software framework documentation to to do all this okay here's my window begin function i set the mode upper and lower limits i then call all these other functions that set up the pin, the clock, the ADC, the window mode, the interrupt, so on and so forth. So let's look at each one of these functions because that's where we're gonna manipulate the register. Oh, and here's the ADC window end. So if you wanna end window mode and wanna go back to using the built-in ADC functions, you can call this and this turns off the interrupt and then disables the ADC. So first thing we do is we set the pins. So 
you know, when you call an analog read function, it does a whole bunch of different stuff under the hood. And this is some of it. For one thing it does is it routes the ADC or, or it sets up a pin so the ADC can connect to it to make a measurement. So here we're going to use PA04. Uh, and that corresponds to Arduino pin A3. So I, I set up that pin. I'm not going to go into the details of this, but these pins are in groups. They use MUX to route them in different ways. Uh, so I'm basically saying, you know, set it up for an input and, you know, you're going to be ready to connect to the ADC. Here I'm setting up my clock. So I enable the ADC module and the, the, the power management. This, this may not even be necessary. This may be the default connection. For the ADC, there's a bunch of different clocks you can use in the uh, SAM D21 besides just the main oscillator that's connected to it on the Arduino board. I'm using the internal eight megahertz clock and I, in a different function, I configure that clock or I enable it. The other thing the SAM D21 does is it allows you to route clocks to different peripherals. So you can use any clock for any peripheral. And the way it does this is through its generic clock module. So what I'm doing, and you can think of the generic clock module as setting up a path from the clock to the peripheral you want to use the clock for. And that's all I'm doing here is routing, I'm using generic clock three, so that's my path. I then say for the eight megahertz clock, and then I then say route it to the ADC because the ID here is 30, which 30 corresponds to the ADC. And once again, this is all in the data sheet. I also enable the clock. So that's my clock. I now have it set up. I now have it routed to the ADC. I set the reference for the ADC and I, I have a video on, goes into detail on, on ADCs, but when, for an ADC, you have to have a reference, something to compare the measurement to so you can define what it is and the reference represents the top of your range. So here I'm saying use VCC as the reference and actually it uses VCC in half. Th this is the default state for Arduino, just, just by the way, is it uses VCC. I then say take one sample, you know, we're not doing averaging. Uh, I don't add extra clock cycles, that's not important. I then, uh, divide the input by two. This is a little confusing, but the, the reason is, is because the reference uses half of VCC. I then divide it by two, so that way I'm getting the full range of VCC. I define the negative side of the measurement to ground, which is the default state for Arduinos. If you want to do a differential measurement, you would have a, a measurement connection here too. And then I say pin four, which once again is, I'm now connecting the ADC to the pin I'm going to use it on. And that's, you saw me set up the pins earlier. Uh, I then pre-scale the clock. I divide it down so it's not going as fast so we can make an accurate measurement. I define it for 10 bit. I then say free run. What free run means is if you're not in free run mode, an event has to trigger an ADC reading. In free run mode, the ADC is just making a reading, putting it in register, setting up, making another reading, writing that new reading over the old reading, and it just does that over and over. So that's what we want to do because in window mode, we want to keep checking for when that window is violated or when it, the reading goes outside that window. Okay, I then set up the window. So here, once again, I'm using registers in the ADC module, window control. Here's where I, I set the mode. So remember that mode we're feeding in is a certain value that corresponds to a bit in that register. I then set that up. Note, you're probably seeing these while loops with these sync busy. This is because it, this event that we're setting up is not synchronous to the main clock. So you're just waiting for it to sync before you move on. And, and the data sheet once again tells you where you need to synchronize. I then decide uh, define the upper tolerance and the lower tolerance windows. So these are just registers where we're storing that value. For this example, I believe it was 750 for the lower because we're in mode one. I then set up the interrupt. So for the ADC interrupt, I say window mode. So there's a, there's a, there's a couple different interrupts for an ADC. You can do an interrupt every time a reading is ready. But for this one, we want to do an interrupt whenever window mode uh, detects an outer range value. 
We then do enable the interrupt and we're saying to the interrupt module that we want to do an ADC interrupt and then we then have to set a priority for that interrupt. So you can have multiple interrupts set up. Which one, if they trigger at the same time, should go off first? This is what this priority defines. And for this example, I'm using zero priority, which is actually the highest priority. This function just enables the ADC. So if I feed a true in here, it'll enable it. And the reason I have two here is because you're trying to write a binary one zero, or we want to disable it. So if this is a false, we'll set it to zero and that'll disable it. And then read ADC. So I set up this function. This allows you to get a reading from the ADC while you're in window mode and it won't mess up our settings. So we can grab that. And that's what I'm doing in the serial monitor show the reading. So what happens is we set up the ADC for window mode, we set it for free run, the ADC is just continually taking readings, comparing them for a window, and then throwing them out and doing another reading. This function just grabs the latest reading from the uh, ADC register. And then this last function just enables that 8 megahertz clock that I mentioned earlier. Okay, that's it for the code. Just a quick overview. Feel free to leverage this. I'm going to have it on my blog. And that's it for part one of utilizing advanced ADC capabilities on Arduinos with the SAM D21. In, we're gonna do part two. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet in part two, but it'll be a good one, I guarantee that. If you have anything to add, please use the comment section. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.